All right, mates. No, that's weird. Hello, love ducks. It's a fine day. Yeah, that's that's definitely better. I hate that I've been in England for four months and I haven't picked up any of the accent. I hate my Nova Scotian lingo. I sound American sometimes. See, people here just think I'm loud. I think it's just the way I speak is incredibly noticeable against a really posh British accent. Today I'm going to talk about traveling long distances, or rather what seems to happen to me when I travel long distances. So if anyone's ever going on a plane, train, long ass car ride, and the trip turns out to be extremely f horrible, you can just blame me. It's not your fault. It's me. So I'm going to tell you guys a few of the stories of the chaos that ensues when I tried to travel somewhere. When I went to college in Nova Scotia, I lived about three hours away from my parents, and sometimes that trip would go smoothly, but most of the time it just went really, really weird. Like the first time I drove back to my parents' house on my motorcycle by myself, that's when my bike decides it's going to eat about twice as much gas as usual. That was fun. Another trip back to college I made with my mom, a pissed off cat and a half full fish tank. And I was just learning how to drive at this point, so every time I stopped I had a lead foot and all the water from the fish tank would tsunami splash and flood the back of the car. Magikarp, you splash. It's super effective. That poor car. So while we're driving along, enjoying SeaWorld, we happened to be one of the first people that came across a really bad accident where an SUV had rolled off the highway and half crushed a woman underneath the car. Don't travel with me. That car accident was mental. I really hope she's okay. Oh, this one happened recently. Uh, my boyfriend and I were going to his hometown for the weekend. So we get our shit together and we get on the train and we travel for maybe an hour before we realize not only have we been traveling in the wrong direction, on the wrong train, yeah, we're not even in England anymore. So we just ended up chilling in Wales for an hour, feeling like failures. I really should have warned him that I'm the evil fairy of travel. Oh, uh, the plane trip I took from Canada to London. Now, the night before getting on a plane, I usually don't sleep because of all the anxiety and excitement about I'm actually going to get on a plane. And we have to take a three-hour car ride from my parents' house to the airport. Then I have another three hours to wait in the terminal before getting on the six-hour flight. <sighs> so in the terminal, there's this guy. This guy is shamelessly singing, humming, moaning along to his mp3 player. And it's so loud that I can hear him over blasting my own mp3 player. So I just assume he's either stupid or it's a really good song. Okay, this man sat there for three hours humming, singing, moaning this song over and over and over and over and over again. I'm just thinking, buddy, if you're on my plane, one of us is going into the Atlantic. He was on my plane. But I didn't really have time to think about that guy because I ended up sitting between the two most polar opposite women in the world. And what I mean is the woman on my left was hyperventilating and freaking out the entire flight. And the woman on the right basically curls herself into a ball, falls asleep on my shoulder, and doesn't move. So if you add up the time it took to get to the airport, the time spent in the terminal, the time on the plane, and then the two-hour coach ride from London to where I'm living, I slept for 18 hours straight after that flight. Do not get on a plane with me. Yeah, me and planes don't mix. 2009, I take another plane from Halifax to Newfoundland. That's an hour and a half long flight. Yeah, that's still enough time for me to screw everything up. And what little sleep I do get that night allows me to miss my flight. I wake up, throw on all my clothes, arrive at the airport frantic, ugly crying, smell bad, not awake, have to buy a new ticket. Go through security where I have to strip down in front of everyone because me, in my state of panic, throws on a metal boned corset underneath my hoodie. Get to the terminal, sit down, start talking to the person that I'm going to go visit while I'm in Newfoundland. Get told off for missing the flight. <laughs> So I'm ugly crying again in the terminal, and I still have two more hours to go before my plane even leaves Halifax. I'm really hoping this is just a curse that only I and the people who travel with me are afflicted with, because my going there trips are crazy. They're absolutely f but my return trips are smooth and peaceful and everything goes just fine. So at least I know whenever I do leave here and go back to Canada that plane is going to be absolutely glorious. But you know what? Accidentally failing is okay too. And I am a fail. And I'll talk to you soon, fellow failures. Bye. Wink, wink.